Have mercy on me, O God, for people assail me. They fight me all day long and oppress me. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always. Welcome again to our morning liturgy. We're grateful for the many of you that, that are able to tune in on, on internet to celebrate with us and to experience spiritual communion at home, the desire to receive communion. You have that in your heart and then you will receive all the graces that come from receiving the Eucharist. We continue to pray for one another, for our world, the end of this virus will come soon so that lives can get back to our normal routines. But in the meantime, we encourage you all to just stay safe, keep your social distancing, and stay grounded in prayer during, the, during these days. Let us begin our Eucharist by first acknowledging our own sinfulness as we prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ have, Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who, by whose wondrous grace we are enriched with every blessing, grant us so to pass from former ways to newness of life, that we may be made ready for the glory of the heavenly kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Daniel. The assembly condemned Susanna to death but Susanna cried aloud, O eternal God, you know what is hidden, and you are aware of all things before they come to be. You know that they have testified falsely against me. Here I am about to die, though I have done none of the things with which these wicked men have charged me. The Lord heard her prayer as she was being led to execution, God stirred up the Holy Spirit of a young boy named Daniel, and he cried aloud, I will have no part in the death of this woman. All the people turned and asked him, What is this you are saying? He stood in their midst and continued, Are you such fools, O children of Israel? to condemn a woman of Israel without examination and without clear evidence? Return to court, for they have testified falsely against her. Then all the people returned in haste. To Daniel the elder said, Come, sit with us and inform us, since God has given you the prestige of old age. But he replied, Separate these two far from each other, that I may examine them. After they were separated one from the other, he called one of them and said, How you have grown evil with age. Now have your past sins come to term, passing unjust sentences, condemning the innocent, and freeing the guilty, although the Lord says, the innocent and the just you shall not, shall not be put to death. Now then, if you were a witness, tell me under which tree you saw them together. Under a mastic tree, he answered. Daniel replied, your fine lie has cost you your head. 
For the angel of God shall receive the sentence from him and split you in two. Putting him to one side, he ordered the other one to be brought. Daniel said to him, offspring of Canaan, not of Judah, beauty has seduced you, lust has subverted your conscience. This is how you acted with the daughters of Israel, and in their fear they yielded to you. But a daughter of Judah did not tolerate your wickedness. Now then, tell me under what tree you surprised them together. Under an oak, he said. Daniel replied, your fine lie has cost you also your head. For the angel of God waits with a sword to cut you in two so as to make an end of you both. The whole assembly cried aloud, blessing God who saves them with hope, who saves those who hope in him. They rose up against the two elders, for by their own words, Daniel had convicted them of perjury. According to the law of Moses, they inflicted on them the penalty they had planned to impose on their neighbor. They put them to death. Thus was innocent blood spared, spared that day. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our responsorial psalm. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. Even though I, I walk, walk in, in the, the dark, dark valley, valley, I fear, I no, fear evil, no evil, for, for you, you are, are at my side. side. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In verdant pastures he gives me repose. Beside restful waters he leads me, he refreshes my soul. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. He guides me in right paths for his namesake. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. Even though I walk in that dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus went to the Mount of Olives, but early in the morning he arrived again in the temple area, and all the people started coming to him, and he sat down and taught them. Then the scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in adultery and made her stand in the middle. They said to him, Teacher, this woman was caught in the very act of committing adultery. Now in the law, Moses commanded us to stone such women. So what do you say? They said this to test him, so that they could have some charge to bring against him. Jesus bent down and began to write on the ground with his finger. But when they continued asking him, he straightened up and said to them, Let the one among you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. Again he bent down and wrote on the ground, and in response they went away one by one, beginning with the elders. So when he was left alone with the woman before him, then he straightened up and said to her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? She replied, No one, sir. Then Jesus said, Neither do I condemn you. Go, and from now on do not sin any more. The Gospel of the Lord. Lord Jesus Christ.
Our readings from sacred scripture this morning present us with two women. There are similarities in their situations, but there are also stark differences in their lives. Susanna was a woman of profound virtue. She had lived her entire life obedient to God. She was a prayerful woman, but she refused to be blackmailed by two elder judges of the people, even if it meant she could save her own life. But proclaiming the truth was more important to her. The woman in the gospel was not a person of virtue. She was an adulterer, and she was not falsely accused like Susanna. There was no question about her actions. She did commit adultery. The two women were accused of the same crime. They lived in different historical times. Both yearned for the help of God. Susanna, through her heartfelt prayer, and the adulterous woman, through her humiliating silence. Both women found hope in the Lord. Both of these women received new life from God. God the Holy Spirit spoke through Daniel to save the life of Susanna. God the Son spoke words of mercy and compassion to save the life of the adulterous woman. What was it that Jesus wrote on the ground that day in the temple as they presented this woman to him? People have asked me that question for years. Did he write the sins of the people on the ground that were gathered? Is that what he wrote? Because he knew their sins? The Gospels do not reveal to us what Jesus wrote. There's been speculation about that for centuries. Father Francis Martin is a biblical scholar, and he offers this theory. A possibility is that Jesus' gesture is a subtle allusion to Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 13, which literally reads, O hope of Israel, O Yahweh, all who abandon you will be put to shame, Those who turn away will be written in the earth because they have abandoned the fountain of living water. The scribes and Pharisees that were accusing this woman would have been familiar with this particular passage from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Writing on the ground would have been a clear message to them from Jesus that they too were sinners. They had rejected the invitation of Jesus, Jesus who was the fountain of living water. Four chapters earlier in John's Gospel, Jesus said to the Samaritan woman at the well, whoever drinks the water I shall give will never thirst. The water I will give will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. In other words, living water. So while their sins may have differed, both the woman caught in adultery and her accusers were sinners. We're all sinners. None of us escapes that. Then Jesus said to the crowd who had their stones in hand ready to throw at her, let the one among you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. Jesus was calling them to reject their sense of self-righteousness. They were to embrace true humility by recognizing their own imperfections. To embrace true mercy and compassion toward this woman as they would want God to do for them. Each one of us should recognize our own truth before God that we are sinners. And those who say they are not sinners, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. We read from the first letter of John. During this time of inactivity from our normal routines due to the coronavirus, many have taken time to reflect and taken stock of their lives, recognizing things about themselves that they might like to change. 
Perhaps it is the fact that the COVID-19 virus does not discriminate in who it attacks, the great and the least alike, and our future is uncertain. Instead of binge-watching your favorite television programs, spend time in prayer and self-reflection during these days. Quality time of prayer. We have the time. And the Holy Spirit, ask for the Holy Spirit to send you the grace of self-knowledge to reveal areas of weakness in your life that you might be blind to, ways to change your life. This could be a wonderful time of grace for our own spiritual growth if we took the time. And God is giving us that time as we all have to hunker down and stay at home. Turn to the Lord and seek forgiveness. The Lord you turn to is a compassionate and a loving God whose only desire is to forgive you, to restore you to full friendship with himself, to lead you to holiness, and to give you the grace to be a saint. St. Augustine wrote a beautiful prayer of the sinner who stands before God. God, our Father, we find it difficult to come to you because our knowledge of you is imperfect. In our ignorance, we have imagined you to be our enemy. We have wrongly thought that you take pleasure in punishing our sins. And we have foolishly conceived you to be a tyrant over human life. But since Jesus came among us, he has shown us that you are loving, that you are on our side, against all that stunts life, and that our resentment against you was groundless. So we come to you, asking you to forgive our past ignorance and wanting to know more and more of you and your forgiving love. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Let us now come before the Lord in prayer. We pray for the Holy Father, the bishops, priests, and deacons, ministering to all in the world, those who are sick and those who are at home, that they may, that they may have the strength to continue to, to give of themselves selflessly. We pray to the Lord. For government leaders, that they may do all in their power for the health and safety of, their, of the people they serve we pray to the Lord. For our men and women who are serving overseas and who are, who are away from their families, that they will be kept safe and brought home safely, we pray to the Lord. For the candidates and catechumens who were preparing to be received into the church, who now have to delay that because of this virus, we pray that they will be, remain strong and steadfast in their spiritual growth and preparation for being received into this church and receiving sacraments of initiation. We pray to the Lord. We pray for doctors and nurses and first responders who are on the front lines of fighting this virus for their safety and health. We pray to the Lord. We pray for those who are sick, that they will recover from this virus. We pray to the Lord. We pray for the repose of the souls of Mickey Kirk and Scott Kimball, for whom this Mass is being offered, and for all who have died, that they may be welcomed into the peace of God's kingdom. We pray to the Lord. And for the prayers that remain in the silence of our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Let us entrust all of our prayers into the gentle arms of Mary, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. 
Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that preparing to celebrate the holy mysteries, we may bring before you as the fruit of bodily penance a joyful purity of heart. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ Jesus our Lord. For you have given your children a sacred time for the renewing and purifying of their hearts that freed from disordered affections, they may so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you, as without end we acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread. And giving you thanks, he broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving you thanks, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one, by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring it to the fullness of charity. 
together with Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our Bishop, John, his auxiliary, the clergy, religious, and all you people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord Jesus be with you always. And, with your spirit. and let us share with one another a sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Strengthened by the blessing of your sacraments, we pray, O Lord, that through them we may constantly be cleansed of our faults, and by following Christ, hasten our steps upward toward you. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Again, we have our rosary every evening at 7 o'clock. We have the weekday masses Monday through Saturday at 8, Sunday at 9. And uh, we'll give more information about Holy Week uh, in the days ahead and how we will uh, celebrate our, uh, the Sacred Triduum here at Sacred Heart online. But more information about that will be coming. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Let us go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.